Hey, well, the Mr. GTI is back in the garage, ready to go for a full um, conversion from race to street. So there's a whole bunch involved here. Um, everything's going to come out of the front end, so I'll pull off the suspension, the uh, control arms, the brakes, uh, axles, transmissions coming out because there's a different uh, longer fifth gear going in. Uh, the exhaust system is going to partially come out because I'm going to make some mods of that to make it quieter. Um, putting in the air conditioning system, uh, obviously putting in the original interior, and you know, otherwise making this like a really nice street car, just a high performance street car. I should be able to keep the race cams and the independent throttle bodies and the full race exhaust basically in place, uh, slightly detuned, uh, just for. We'll see. The car's pretty drivable because the ITBs really cut the power below 4,000, so it's quite docile. And the throttle response isn't too bad uh, for street driving. And then it still has the crazy uh, upper RPMs, which is nice. So anyway, yeah, I'm working on that. And uh, so I'm going to start tearing it apart right now. So these are the springs I'm going to put in. I'm taking out the racing springs. So. What I've got for the front, instead of 440 pounds, uh, six inch spring, I'm going to have a, um, a 275. And I'm going to run 225s in the front with, uh, in the rear with a 150 progressive. Now, most of this is going to collapse. I'll end up with about, with, you know, corner weight in the back of 330 or 40 pounds. I'll end up with most of this being collapsed and I'll only end up with about three quarters of an inch of 150 pound per inch spring rate before it switches to the 225 spring rate. So I'll get some uh, give in the rear uh, before it gets stiffer. Um, so just a tiny amount of rear end roll before it grabs. Um, should make this hopefully, um, you know, with the Bilstein racing um, struts. It should um, work well to be still very sporty but uh, more comfortable than obviously the uh, the full race setup. Yeah so this is one of the tricks that I've been shown which is to um, basically use some urethane window um, adhesive um, to uh, infill the, um, the the Febby um, HD like the upper upper mounts so these things being, um, uh, they have a tendency to fall apart after a few years, and with racing springs and struts and stuff, you compound them out a lot faster than that. So the idea is you fill in the gap. Uh, they still have a little bit of rubber to them, but um, they're just going to last. So um, yeah, that's a trick that uh, we're uh, we're working with here. Yeah, pull out the control arms and the brakes and the suspension and the axles and all that stuff. A bunch of it's piled up here. Good uh, bit of work for the afternoon. Yeah, a couple things. One, uh, the splines going in here to the knuckles, those uh, had to get pounded out. A little bit rusty. A little bit of PB blaster to help that. And same thing with the, um, the uh, inner CV joints sometimes stick to the cups and the transmission. Um, differential and I used a, uh, ultimately had to use a chisel with a larger hammer to kind of grab the edge of the flange right here and kind of knock it out because uh, they're a little bit stubborn. But uh, yeah, and the stress bars are out and stuff, so I'm making some progress here. Well, I just ran a leak down test to see how the motor is doing. Um, so, you know, two, two, three, and four, and then remember the engine, sorry, you don't know this, the engine's cold, and I can't fire it up, there's no oil in it, I've just started to tear it apart, but basically, I'm getting three to four percent leakage on cylinders two through four, and then seven to eight percent, uh, maybe a bit higher, nine percent on cylinder one. But it varies, and I think it's because the engine's um, kind of a little gummed up right now. I 
hadn't run it in a long time, it hasn't really warmed up, and the plugs are cold plugs I had in for racing. They're disgusting. And I think there's a bunch of crud because I've got those valve stem seals are leaking on the exhaust. And uh, what I'm thinking is I'm getting oil into the combustion chamber and there's some crud. I'm hearing uh, through both the intake and the, and the crank um, some, um, some whistling noises. So I hear it on, on all of them, but you know, I hear it more in cylinder one, obviously. And um, so I'm thinking it's not rings. Uh, and I haven't bent any valves. It's, that would be a lot worse if I think if I bent a valve. But uh, I think I'm not going to pull the heads off and pull the block apart just <coughs> to chase this. I think I'll um, get the valve stone seals replaced. I'm going to do the, 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 um, the main bearing rods. Uh, or, or sorry, the... Uh, the um, large journal um, um, piston rods and uh, get those bearings placed the way um, Josh mentioned builder wanted me to replace them so anyway oil's out and I'm gonna drain the coolant soon um, just to check the valve lash because now I'm gonna have to pull the cams to do the valve stem still so I'm going to um, basically uh, see if they need any adjusting because these are this is a solid lifter 288 race cam and uh, last time I checked it the valve blast was great I'll check it one more time and if it's okay then I'll just leave uh, the lash caps the way they are so I'm pulling off the camshafts now so I can do the uh, exhaust valve guide stem or seals and uh, these items I've added temporarily just to compensate for the fact that the racing cams um, you run out of the height of the um, you know you're backing off the nuts and then and the, you know, the screws don't or the, um, the threads on the um, suds don't have enough length so you're, the uh, spring on uh, uh, I guess this is number eight uh, sorry, cylinder four intake. Uh, it's a valve cap or camshaft cap number eight. That, that one's still under tension. Some of them are still under tension. I'm backing them off. I'm at the very last thread, and there's still pressure there. S significant pressure as the spring's trying to push this one up. So I don't want it to go flying when I get to the end of the thread. So this is my safety here. Yeah, I got the camshafts out, but uh, and, and that little technique of having those extra bars in there helped that last uh, tenth of an inch or so. Um, I did not want to take off the cam sprocket, uh, and so I was able to take the inner piece of the sprocket and loosen, like the, the Allen um, bolts out, and then it was loose enough I could fiddle it off and get enough clamps to pull it out. So anyway, that worked out well. I'm only changing the valve stems, the seals on the exhaust, which are the ones that are leaking. The SuperTech ones suck. So I'm putting in the OEM ones. I think it's Petron. For a 7mm stems, I have 5.5mm intakes, but I'm not changing those ones. They're Honda oversized valves. So I'm going to um, probably use the string in the hole method, so you put string you know, drop the piston down, fill the combustion chamber full of string, and then put the piston up until it's pushing against the valves, and then you can take the valve, um, uh, the, the uh, retainers out and pull, you know, with the spring compressor, and then uh, not have to worry about um, the valves dropping in rather than using compressed air. I think that's what I would rather use. So we'll see how that goes. Hey, I went a little crazy, pulled the heads off because I wanted to see what I could see and uh, I thought well, why not do a uh, uh, another set of rings and rehome 
So let's see if you guys can see there. Just uh, you know, a little bit of a of a piston skirt wear on the sides, but remarkably good. Um, I will have a look at the heads here in some detail in a minute. I'll just uh, set this light. Let's see how do I do it with my hand. There we go. Um, so these Bicycle pistons are, um, you know, they don't look badly beaten up at all. Uh, that, this is a little muggy, the other ones are a little cleaner. And uh, a head gasket showing, I don't know if it's showed any uh, bleed through anywhere, it's hard to tell. But uh, I'll be replacing that anyway. And um, combustion chambers a little bit gooped up because of uh, the oil leakage on the exhaust valve uh, seals. But I'll tune all that up, make it all look pretty. So yeah, we're gonna we're gonna take that apart and clean up the cylinder heads and freshen them up, freshen up the bottom end and slowly put it all back together. So I've been cleaning everything up, getting everything pretty again, getting all the carbon deposits out and um, they uh, got the, let me just pull this valve over here, sorry, anyway. Um, yeah, so I've been re-polishing and making everything super pretty so that the uh, airflow will be phantasmic and um, placing the intake and the exhaust um, uh, valve uh, stem seals. We've been using the um, SuperTech um, seals which are um, they just either they're too hard or something but they don't um, they don't seal very well so I ended up with a lot of oil everywhere as I've told you guys and um, but I'm going to replace the intakes as well I figured engines been together for four years almost and um, you know the seals why not change them right because they eventually will wear out so um, anyway uh, the dirty work is done I'm just waiting for some parts a piston, I got uh, just new Weissco, um ring set and uh, I'll hone a block lightly and then put new rings in uh, with, the, with the new bearings and uh, so I'll refresh the bottom end, refresh the top end and put it all back together and uh, engine should be super happy.